Hi, Flash Tube. This is Tina Fraser coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. It is Tuesday, February 6th at approximately 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, things have been really busy. I haven't uploaded a video in a sh little short while because work has been just too hectic and I have been working more than 50 hours a week for the last couple of weeks just trying to play catch up. We have a deadline to get our uh, audits completed by tomorrow into business and I'm going to be able to do that because I worked my butt off the last two weeks and it's just been really busy. I haven't had a lot of free time. I've been working late um, until about 10 or 11 o'clock at night. I've been working five and six hours on Saturdays and Sundays. It's just been really hectic. I haven't had a lot of stitchy time. I'm hoping to alleviate that tonight after I get done here. Um, I'm planning some stitching time. My workout tonight was canceled because the personal trainer I have had another event down on the south side of town and it was going to run into our workout time. So instead of having them have to drive all the way to the north side of town just for a 15 or 20 minute workout, we decided to reschedule. So I have tonight off. I'll have tomorrow off. <laughs> Thursday just have bell choir we're going to be playing games with our friends Jeff and Maureen and uh, then this weekend I am planning a trip to the in-laws again so um, I'm actually kind of hoping to record a stitch with me video uh, I might do it live I don't know it just kind of depends from my in-laws house this weekend because I'm planning on stitching a whole hell of a lot I haven't gotten a lot done. Um, I do have some stash to show you. I do have a few other things to show you. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I have a little bit of progress to show you. I haven't made a lot of progress. Like the Barbados Santa, I still have to finish that up and put beads on it. That's going with me this weekend. Um, just a lot of things have, happening, have been happening in my life. Um, because of work commitments and everything else going on, you know, I don't remember if I had told you in a, an earlier video that uh, most of you know that I volunteered for, or I was volunteering for my local roller derby league, flat women's flat track roller roller derby. Uh, Columbus has had a league since 2005, and I have been a part of the league since 2005. I was originally a skater. Um, after the first season in 2006, I retired as a skater, became a skating referee. I skated as a referee for our roller derby league for a few years. Um, also driving up to Akron, Ohio, which is about an hour and a half or so away from here, to help Rubber City Roller Girls for a few seasons um, of their home games. And I've done a little bit of traveling here and there. But uh, a few years after retiring as a skater and becoming a skating referee, it just, the skating became a little too hard on my body. So I retired as a referee and became a non-skating official, also known as an NSO. And I have been basically with the league for the last 13 years. Well, towards the end of last year, on our December break, I was taking the advantage of not having scrimmages on Wednesday nights any longer and started going to the local stitch night at my cross stitch at the local needle workshop I attend the two cats over there fighting don't mind me if I keep looking over that way but um, anyway I decided that I was gonna start going to that um, at least once or twice a month derby scrimmages were always on Wednesday nights <laughs> Uh, two or three hours a night uh, every Wednesday and you know they were fun but uh, you know for the last 13 years I've been missing out on a lot of things because of roller derby and um, the time off you know I've been kind of toying with the idea of just retiring anyway just so I can go watch the games I haven't been able to watch the games in years I haven't been able to sit and cheer because as a non-skating official you're supposed to be impartial and not show support for any one team so for the last 13 years I haven't been able to cheer or clap or you know say good job or anything I've had to remain impartial and I'm kind of just not really wanting to do that anymore so 
Um, it, talking with my husband, I was going to, we have our first, uh, the league has the first home game coming up, uh, St. Patrick's Day. No, St. Patrick's Day. I think St. Patrick's Day is on a Saturday. Um, yeah, so the first, the first home game is, uh, March 17th, that, well, that weekend anyway. And I was going to make that my last hurrah. That was going to be my last game with the league and everything like that. So January came came in and, you know, everybody came off of break. And I had missed the December league meeting just because I had something else going on that night. So I missed the league meeting. The first week in January rolls around and scrimmage came on Wednesday. And I chose not to go. And that weekend, I was talking with my husband because I am just not feeling, I just wasn't feeling it. I, I wasn't getting the same thing out of it that I've been getting for the last 13 years. Don't get me wrong. I love the people there. I love the people in the league. I love the skaters. I love the other non-skating officials. I love the referees. I love everybody I've met. And I've learned so much about myself. But... I just wasn't getting anything out of it going once, twice a week. And they're really pushing to get everybody to volunteer to do other games outside of just our league and do tournaments and stuff like that. There's a certification program for the International Roller Derby Association that governs our sport. And there's a certification program for that. And there has been pretty much ever since you know we've been part of the organization back in 2005 um, I have never really wanted to go for it as much as I know about the positions that I do like jam timing and scorekeeping and penalty box timing penalty box manager inside whiteboard there's all these non skating positions that they fill every game that I mean, it's amazing. They, they have like a ton of people that do all this extra work besides just the skaters to make the game run smoothly and to, you know, make each game able to count towards world world rankings for all the teams. There's just a lot going on with it. And I, I'm just kind of tired. And I basically, you know, I did this once before kind of for a season I basically took a season off um, and I sat in the bleachers for every home game that we had that season and I drank my beer because <laughs> I could finally drink because you can't drink when you're officiating a game obvious for obvious reasons and um, I cheered and it was so much fun and then towards the end of that year I kind of started to miss it I started missing being on the inside and kind of knowing and doing and being a part of the whole thing that is roller derby as it is today. And so I went back um, after, towards the end of the season, I went back and I helped them out. And I've been doing that ever since. Um, and that season I took off was probably about six or seven years ago. So it's been a little while since I've taken a break. Um, but... I started hitting my 13th year this year. This would be my 13th year. Um, and I just wasn't wasn't feeling it. Um, you know, Wednesday night, I'm like, you know, I just want a night just to not have anything going on. And if I want to go to my cross-stitch store and stitch on Wednesday nights, I want to be able to do that. There's another group that I'd like to help out that, you know, they have a little open workshop time from 6.30 to 8.30, and, you know, you can go into their office and make blankets for the kids in foster care here in central Ohio. Um, I want to do that. There's just a lot of other things on Wednesday nights that I'd like to do. Unlike our giant eagles, you know, the one giant eagle, excuse me, the one giant eagle grocery store my husband and I like to go to, they have a Wednesday night wine and cheese night, you know, for like five bucks or something. You can go and taste three or four different wines and they serve them with a you know basically an appetizer a main course 
uh, a salad, a side dish, or a dessert. You know, you little samples of it, obviously, and you get like an ounce of wine. But it's really good. That's on Wednesday nights, too. And we haven't been able to go because I've had roller derby. <laughs> so anyway, long story short, two weeks ago, <laughs> I turned in my official retirement with the Ohio Roller Derby what used to be Ohio Roller Girls. I turned in my official retirement notice and um, made it official. Um, <laughs> I, I did a little bit of crying over this. <laughs> I might get a little emotional, but it's been a good part of my life for 13 years. And, you know, I just think it was time. I think it was time that I... Uh, just sort of moved on. So, yep. So that's good. I'm looking forward to becoming a spectator, though. I haven't been a spectator in a long time. So, um, yeah, don't mind me why I wipe my tears. They're good tears. It's all good. It, it really is all good. But it has been 13. It has been involved in my life in 13 years. And it was big, big, pretty big involvement. Um, but, yeah, so, anyway... That was my big retirement from roller derby. Um, hopefully, if I remember, I'm going to attach some pictures of <laughs> me in roller derby over the last several years um, to the end of this video, if I remember. And uh, hopefully, you'll get you'll get to get to see me in various aspects, um, <laughs> various aspects of my roller derby skating, refereeing, and non-skating official duties. Um, yeah, it's been a journey and I've learned a lot and I've learned a lot about myself and, uh, the whole main reason why I did this roller derby thing is because skating is fun. You know, I grew up skating. It was fun. And, uh, I'm the type of person that, you know, I don't, I don't like people telling me I can't do something. Um, I'm going to try it. If it sounds fun, I'm willing to try it. Um, so yeah, that's why I've done some of the crazy things I've done over the years. Um, and you know, who knows, maybe in six months to a year, I might actually go back to roller derby in some aspect, but as of right now, um, it's official. I have retired from, uh, roller derby with my league, my, the league here in Columbus, Ohio, which is the Ohio, Ro Ohio roller derby, what used to be called Ohio roller girls, um, so I'm officially retired. <laughs> it's kind of kind of good. Um, it's good in a lot of ways. Frees me up a little bit. Kind of <sighs> takes away that cloud that I've had. I'm going to adjust this a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, takes away that cloud that's been kind of hanging over me of me wanting to, sorry about that, me wanting to just, um, you know, take a little more time out for myself and just be me. So, yeah. Anyway, all right. So that was the biggest news so far this uh, this month. Um, like I said, we're going to West Virginia this weekend to see the in-laws. That'll be fun. We haven't seen them since Christmas. Um, we're hoping to make this an every, every month trip. But uh, part of that depends on work. Um, one other thing, too. Oh, the other thing is I hit my 20th anniversary at work. Um, yeah, I've been with the company that I work for for 20 years now as of this month, February. Um, it's been a long haul. <laughs> uh, some good, some bad, some pretty bad. But it's been a pretty good haul. And I'm, other than some of the overtime and some of the deadlines being a little tough to meet, um, I'm generally liking where I'm at now. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty good, so... Anyway, enough about that. We'll kind of get into a little bit of the stitchy stuff. So, my local needle workshop, Cross My Heart, here in Kenny Center, Columbus, Ohio, they have a Super Bowl Sunday sale pretty much every year. Um, it's usually the only Sunday that they are ever open during the year. There was one or two years where they weren't open on Sunday. Instead, they had their sale on Saturday, but this year they were open on Sunday. So, I went. And it was, I'm kind of glad I went. Um, I hadn't been there in a week or two. Um, I took my friend Vicky to one of the stitch nights in January, but I'm going to show you what I got. Um, 
these pieces have been on my wish list for um, for a while now, um, but I finally got them. I picked up a new thing of needles. I got some John James Tapestry Petite size 28. These are kind of my favorite needles. I haven't tried Bowen needles yet, um, but these are the, these are my go-to throwdowns. I really like the Tapestry Petites because they're really short. I can use more thread that way when I stitch. So I got another pack of those. I don't know that I necessarily needed them, but I got them anyway. So, all right. The first um, pattern on my list is an old and is an old one. These are both Mirabilia's. Um, I ended up with the Snow Queen. I don't know if you can see this. It's the Snow Queen. Um, I have a goal of, I don't have them all yet, but I hope to get all the reindeers. I have the sleigh, and I'm going to have to check my stash to see which one of the reindeers I have. Um, and I'm not sure I have the Santa either, but I have the Snow Queen, um, which is going to go in my, in my group. Uh, I have a goal of stitching all of them. And putting them above my front living room window, we have a big picture window that has about a eight or nine inch space above it between the uh, curtain rod and the ceiling. And I just think that whole set would look really pretty just stretched right across the picture window that is over behind you. So anyway, I got the Snow Queen. And part of the Snow Queen calls for Karen Water Lilies. It calls for two colors of Karen Water Lilies. And I actually did pick those up. So I will show you those too. Um, the first color, the first color of Karen Wa Water Lilies it calls for is 197 Monsoon. Now this, this is coming out at least in my video camera screen. Um, it looks kind of blue, but this is actually kind of like a, a green, kind of a, a sea green kind of color. But it calls for two skeins, so I got my two skeins of that. And then it also calls for 254, which is porcelain blue. It's this light blue right here. And this is kind of a blue. Don't mind that. It's kind of a blue. So you have porcelain blue, 254. And Monsoon, number 197, from Karen Waterloo's. Whoops, sorry. Sorry about that, but you can kind of see. And this is for the Snow Queen. I don't know where in the pattern this, this goes, but um, anyway. So I have some of the floss and the pattern for Snow Queen. I'm looking forward to stitching with that, to stitching that soon. That might be a new start this year, maybe. Then, of course, because I like Asians, don't, don't mind the noise, I like Asian themed things. Um, I also had to get the new mirror, newest, one of the newest Mirabilia's, Miss Cherry Blossom. She is now in my stash. Miss Cherry Blossom. I'm looking forward to stitching her. Um, there's Blended Threads, Krynik, uh, Mill Hill Treasures, Mill Hill Beads. Uh, yeah, so I got her. I may end up kidding her later on and maybe getting started on her. I have a few Asian um, things already started. I may actually try and get them finished before I even start on her. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. So that's some of my newest acquisitions. Um, two weekends ago, here in, o here in Columbus, there was a Japanese animation convention called OhioCon. It's O-H-A-Y-O-C-O-N, OhioCon. And it's a fairly large Japanese animation convention, um, certainly not as large as like Colossal Con or, you know, some of the other anime conventions on the East or West Coast. But it's a pretty big one, you know, a couple thousand people show up. And my husband and I, we like to support the artists that are in Artist Alley, you know, because it, they're trying to they're trying to repay their booth space. Um, this is kind of what they do for fun. Some of them do it for a living, you know. And we really like some of the Artist Alley stuff because it's it tends to be one of a kind. 
um, you can't get it in just a normal store. Um, and OhioCon, unfortunately, for the artists in Artist Alley, has a policy that they're not allowed to sell anything that's mainstream. So if you're if you know like Pokemon, they can't do an artist rendering of some Pokemon character and sell it in their booth at OhioCon because Pokemon is trademarked. Some anime conventions will let them, but OhioCon is one that won't. Now some of these artists also show up at some of the other local anime conventions like MatsuriCon. Um, I think there's an anime punch and some other couple of smaller cons around the area. There's, I think there's one in Dayton. There's one up in Ashland. There's a couple in, you know, uh, Sandusky. There's some down in Cincinnati, uh, the Con Cincinnati, Kentucky little area down there. Um, there's a few there. Um, so some of these artists just travel around and we've seen them year after year after year. And so while I was at Ohio Con this year, I was trying to figure out a way to support the artists um, that are there and uh, you know I've been seeing a lot of people on floss tube with needle minder collections well I don't have a lot of needle minders I only had like three or four um, and so I was looking for different things that I could add magnets to to make needle minders out of and lo and behold you know there's lots of buttons um, a lot of the artists sell buttons like crazy, like the pin-on buttons. Um, so I ended up buying some buttons, but then some of the artists actually did have magnets. And I'd like to show you some of the magnets. Now one of them has, a, you know, some of them also sell pins, like the, the cloison, 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 cloisonne, however you say it. Those uh, metallic pins with the little painted, painted stuff, you know, or like the, the Olympic pins and stuff that you can collect. Um, some of them sell those kind of pins. So I was looking at different things that I could get for um, to make needle my, my own needle binders out of. And I actually came up with quite a few. Um, these are actually, most of these are magnets that I picked up from somewhere. I, I have this little Hello Kitty. It's a Hello Kitty little magnetic pen thing with some pens on it. But you'll see some of my needle binders. These are actually magnets that actually were sold as magnets. I have this little sushi and Chinese food carryout. I think these are called kawaii. Kawaii. K-A-W-A-I-I. -I. Um, these are cute. These are what are called cute. So if you do like cute stickers in Google, um, you'll see a lot of these types of images. But there's a little um, noodle noodle bowl, Chinese takeout, and a little uh, sushi sushi bowl guy. So there's that one. Um, llamas tend to be really big. So I got this little llama guy. Any cute? Yeah. Like I said, llamas tend to be really cute. Here are really popular. Here's a llama. A llama in a coffee cup. Isn't that cute? Um, show you this. A lot of people may be familiar with the um, the beckoning cat. Um, it's a lucky cat. It's also known as a lucky cat. Here is a version of a lucky cat. This just happens to be the black version of a lucky cat. This is a little magnet. Um, so these are going to be some of my new needle minders. So you may see some of these tonight. Little lucky cat. Little black lucky cat. From the same seller, I just dropped it on the floor. Bear with me. Oh, here's a, from the same seller. Here is a cat in a little noodle bowl. A cat in a noodle bowl. I think he's cute. And he's got an egg on his head. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. He's got He's got an egg on his head. Because he's in a bowl of noodles. Here's a magnet. I have this bookmark. I bought this bookmark a year or two ago from the person. But I really I really like bunnies. Bunnies are my thing. So here's a little bunny with an umbrella. I have this as a bookmark. It's really cute. 
Um, some of you may know that uh, if you play Animal Crossing, there is a character in Animal Crossing that it's what's that is what's called an axolotl. I don't know if I'm even saying that. It's A X O L O T L axolotl. Um, anyway, I found a little axolotl little guy. There he is. Little axolotl. I have a bookmark for this that I got this year too. And I'm also sending this to my niece. My niece went to um, a uh, an aquarium and she saw her first one and she's like, oh my god, they're so cute. Let me see if I can get this, uh, this other magnet for you. <laughs> there we go. Using scissors. Using scissors to get the magnet. Alright, so here's the white Nico. The white lucky cat. So I have a white lucky cat and a black lucky cat. Um, one of the other sellers had... These are cute too. One of the other sellers had a set of business cats. So we have this business cat. This business cat. We have this business cat. And then we have this business cat. I thought the cats were really cute. So I have those business cats for you. Or for a needle minder. Um, then one of the pins that I got, the enamel pins... Um, was this a, a vendor was there who has these little cloisonne pins these uh, metal metallic pins um, you know that are painted um, she she does some kawaii stuff and she has a um, she's known for so a couple of her characters and one of her characters is her bunny bubble tea so I got this little teeny pin here bunny bubble tea and you can see the little bun bunnies floating in her bubble tea. This is a little cloisonne pin. You can see it's got the um, the little post. I don't know if you can see the post on there. But I bent the post over and I got a neo neodymium din uh, magnet from Hobby Lobby. And I used some E6000 and glued the magnet to the back. So now I have a bunny bubble tea needle minder. Bunny bubble tea needle minder. Because I like bunnies. I, and I just said the bubble tea was cute. And I knew nobody would have a bunny bubble tea needle minder. So that is my bunny bubble tea needle minder. And there they go. There's some of them. I'm just putting them on here for now. So I can kind of keep the magnets away from other things. Um, so there's that. Um... Some of the other things I get. This was a pouch I picked up from one of the vendors. It's the lady that does the Nico cat. Uh, the Nico button. She, this is one of her designs. This is a little pouch. Um, you know, I have several of these different pouches from various vendors. But this this was a really cute one. It has a Kokeshi. And this uh, Japanese figure. And the Nico. The lucky cat Nico. Um, but I also picked up some other buttons and such. That I'm going to be turning into some needle minders. Um, so I will show you those. So my needle minder collection just skyrocketed through the roof. Um, yeah. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, some of these may actually not turn into needle, needle minders. I haven't decided 100% which ones are turning into needle minders and which ones won't be. Um, and oh yeah, and I also picked up stickers. You know, like there's a... A lazy egg sticker and you know some other artist kind of stickers those are gonna go in my planner at some point um, when I decide like the little cat stickers I got a bunch of stickers too um from the same lady here's here's her um here's the dark version of the cat that was on her bag so I have the button. It's just the button right now. But I'm going to add a big magnet. Probably take off the button part and add a magnet. Make that a sticker. Or a needle minder. 
From another artist, we have another little cat. I kind of really like lucky cats. Lucky cats are cute. Um, this one is going to a friend of mine um, in roller derby, actually. She's really into corgis. And corgis are really popular at, at anime conventions. Um, this is a little corgi wrapped up in some Christmas lights. I think she's going to like this. I thought this was really cute. Um, so this is going to a friend of mine. Um, I don't know what she's going to do with it, but she really likes corgis. So there you go. I might actually have to get me some some of these uh, later to turn into uh, needle binders. Um, here's the Kokeshi. It's the same girl on the front. You can see. I had to get the, I had to get her because I really like Kokeshis. Um, let's see. Oh, and this was cute too. This one's definitely going on my. This is a little cup of tea with some sugar cubes. It's a little teacup. It's a kawaii teacup. This is going to be a needle minder because um, you know I've been drinking tea. Speaking of which, come on. Um, it's my big cup of tea. I found this cup, this little snowman cup. I think I paid a dollar for it. I'm drinking Christmas tea. Twinings? Is that what I'm drinking? I don't know. I need to take the tea bag out of it. Yes, it's Twinings. Twinings. Christmas tea. That's what I'm drinking tonight. So, yeah. There's that. Um, drinking tea. My big snowman mug. Um, I think I got the mug for a dollar <laughs> at the dollar store. Um, all right. So, um, one more button. This is another really cute button by another one of the artists in Artist Alley. You see this little cat? It's a couple of cats napping during tea time. I thought that was really cute. That's going to become a needle minder. Um, I have a couple of more enamel pins. Um, actually, these are... Um, well, there's another button. Oh, yeah. A little faux needle bowl. Or noodle bowl. With the eggs in it. That's going to become another needle minder. I might have shown you that already. Um, but uh, these are cell phone charms that I found. These are metallic. Um, these will turn pretty well into a um, into little needle minders. You can see, you know, these buttons. These buttons are about the size of a quarter. So you can get the size. This one's bigger. You know, these these two are bigger. So um, this one's about the size of a quarter. So you kind of get the idea. A little, little cute, little cute thing. Um, here's another little cute thing. Another little one. This is a cat sushi. Cat sushi. It's cat shrimp sushi. It's so cute. Uh, that'll be a needle minder. And then the favorite needle minder of this type that I'm going to make into a needle minder is, oh look at that, that came off. Oh well, um, <laughs> this is really cute. Narwhal ice cream or ice cream narwhal. This is really cute. Ice cream, ice cream narwhal. I don't know if you can see him. Ice cream narwhal. He's really cute. Yeah, ice cream narwhal. He's got little, little sprinkles in the chocolate. It's really cute. It's really cute. Um, I'm not really super big on narwhals. Narwhals and corgis aren't necessarily my thing, but uh, narwhals get uh, <laughs> they're really hot at uh, anime conventions. And corgis, they're like the thing. Um, so yeah, we went to we went to Ohio Con. That's what I got. I got a couple other keychains, but I don't know that I'm gonna turn them into anything specific because they tend to be these are bigger and these are made out of um, thick plastic. So here, here's another Nico. This I think is a cell phone or bag charm, but he's pretty big. Um, I got an artist rendition of a mermaid. A mermaid. 
you can see it's acrylic. It's kind of big, kind of thick. I don't know. She's really cute. Little Mermaid. And then oh, I got another axolotl. This axolotl is adorable. I just think he's so freaking adorable. I said freaking. He is so freaking adorable. And it's kind of double sided. So you can see him there. It's an axolotl. I just think he's so cute. Um, I'd like to turn this into a needle minder. I'm just not sure how with the acrylic being that thick, if um, putting a heavy magnet on the back of him is going to make him magnetic enough to use as a needle minder. So I may just keep him like this. I don't know. So these three acrylic ones, I'm probably just leaving as keychain fobs or you know whatever kind of fobs they are. Whatever kind of fobs they are. Um, the other stuff I have plans of turning them all into needle minders. So yeah, once I get all the magnets for them, I'm going to use my E6000 and turn them into needle minders. So my needle minder collection just shot up like really tremendously. Um, so that's all I have for now as far as that goes. Um, we're going on 36 minutes. Um, so let me move on to a little bit of an update. Um, like I said, I don't have very much update on Barbados Santa. I don't have very much update on um, Let It Snow by Stitch Rovia. Because um, I haven't been working on that. That's probably what I'm going to be working on tonight. Because um, I haven't worked on it in a little while. Um, I did start the Linen and Threads Mystery Sampler Stitch Along for 2018. I may have showed you guys that. I may have showed you guys that. I'm not really sure. So this is the mystery stitch along that I've gotten so far. Um, just this little section up here. Haven't really gotten very far on it. It's my bunny needle, needle minder. Um, for this one, I am using I'm using Threadworks. Um, this is Threadworks. Um, sorry about that. Um, I am using currently for the January part. I am using Threadworks. This color, this colorway. It's a kind of light tans. Um, this one is 1032. Threadworks 1032. Um, it's the light tan. This is for January. This is all I have started so far. I know February is out, but I will also be using Threadworks 1156, lots of purples and greens and tans. Um, I'll be using Karen Water Lilies 340 Brandywine, which is purples and browns. And then um, Simply Shaker Sampler Threads by The Gentle Art, Mountain Mist. So I've got kind of the greens and purple greens, purple, and tan color schemes going on right here. Greens, purples, and tans color scheme. I don't know if that's coming out really well. It looks really washed out in my view of it, but yeah. So anyway, and uh, I'm doing this on antique white linen uh, 32 count. One strand over one full cross just because I thought it would be easier that way I think this is 32 count it might be 28 count I have it somewhere where do I have it oh well, excuse me it's 40 count linen <laughs> well all right 40 count I'm it was wrong all the way around 40 count linen 40 count antique white linen I'm doing it one over two that's it, 30, 40 count linen, one over two. And that's what I've got done so far, was this little area here. This is the Linen and Threads Mystery Sampler. Um, yes, I can show the first part to you. Is this the first part? Yes, it is. It's this. The Linen and, Th linen and Threads Mystery Sampler for 2018. I am working on this little itty bitty part up in here. That's all I've got started. February's out already. 
but this is this is what I'm working on. Um, <laughs> you can see I have a little folder that has my pattern in it. Sumiko Garashi. It's just a little plastic folder that I have my um, my pattern in for these. I've been using these little document folders because they're really not, they're really handy. They're kind of protective, you know, kind of waterproof. They're lightweight and uh, I don't know. I kind of like these folders. Um, I did not get this at OhioCon. I got this at the Japanese store, the um, Japanese trinket store that is near the Japanese grocery store that we like to go to and also near the sushi restaurant that we really like to go to. Um, but, uh, yeah, these are just little document folders. They're like two bucks. I kind of like these a lot. I have quite a few of these. Um, but anyway, that is the progress I've made on that. All right. So the next thing I've been working on, let me get this kind of out of the way first. Beep, beep. Um, yeah. Sorry about the mouse. Sorry about the noise. Just trying to kind of keep this in some sort of order. And one of the things I need to do, though, um, I need to find a new grime guard to hold this because <laughs> my grime guard is stretched out. This was one I think I handmade, and I didn't do a good job of it. I need to find a bigger grime guard. So if anybody could recommend a grime guard that won't be as stretched out, you can see how tight this is in the corner. I just really need to find a grime guard, a grime guard that's big enough for these. I don't have very many sizes. I don't have very many. I think I only have two or three grime guards anyway. I really need to find more. Um, so if anybody can recommend a grime guard and some grime guards, some bigger sizes that can fit this, um, that would be great. I would, I would like it a lot. I'm not looking for anything fancy. I'm not looking for anything special. You know, you've seen some of the stuff I like. I like Hello Kitty. I like all kinds of stuff. I'm just not looking for anything really, really fancy. Just something that I can use to, you know, protect my work as I work. All right. So, don't mind me while I get all the stuff, stuff back in the bag. All right. All right, so the next next item I have progress on is Stone Hearth Hutch. Um, I've worked on this a couple of times since my last video. Woo! Stay. Um, so I don't know if you remember from my last video, but there we go. I don't know if you remember from my last video. I'll turn it this way a little bit. Um, I had done some work over here. I went all the way up the side just to see how tall it was going to be. Um, I had This is where I originally started the piece at. You can see, I don't know if you can see some of the sparkly. There's some blending filaments done down in there. Um, but I did some more of the sky work up here. Now the difference that, the difference there is between the blue up here and the blue down here is the blue down here isn't finished. Yes, the blue down here is stitched, but there's three or four different symbols that uses this blue as base. I have to go back in and add either the blending filament or another color over the top of it. So that'll be fun. Not. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of looking forward to this anyway. This is my, one of my most favorite Thomas Kincaid um, pieces ever. Stone Hearth Hutch. So, um, I really love his winter scenes. I was really sad when he passed away because that just means that all his stuff is going to get more and more and more and more expensive. But, um, this, this piece was, um, a design, a pattern out of a Just Cross Stitch magazine. I believe it was December, 1998. This was one of the cover pieces. So this is as far as I've gotten, gotten some of the sky done up here. Um, is my needle minder, little heart. Um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, this I believe is 20, 32 count linen. I want to say this is 32 count linen. I'm doing it over two. This is just a white piece, white piece of linen, doing it over two. Can't tell you what kind of linen this is, but, uh. I have a question for you. Are you guys the type of people that like take the little snub, the little flubby, like fat pieces in your linen and pull them out? 
you see if I can show you. I don't know if you're familiar with linen, but sometimes linen is very uneven. I don't even know if you can see any of those little slubs. But there are these little bumpy parts in linen where the thread, the thread in some area is bigger than that same thread further down or further away. And um, <laughs> I, have a, I have a bad habit. If the slub is really big and it's really noticeable and it's going to be in my work, I'll have a habit of pulling some of it out. I don't know if that makes sense, if what I'm saying makes sense to some of you. But, like, if there's a really big, really big fat piece of the thread in the fabric, I will tend to thin it out. And I know a lot of people kind of like, oh, why'd you do that? Um, <laughs> because, you know, I'm not necessarily a fan of all my stitches 100% being exactly the same size. But if there's a big slub of something in the fabric, I'm going to make it look less big. Especially if I'm covering it up completely. Um, so if the, if the thread gets a little weird when I pull the little extras out, um, I don't mind so much because I'm covering it up. Um, and I just don't want my stitches, you know, one, that one stitch to look like three times the size of the other stitches around it because of that slub in the fabric. So I'm the type of person I'll actually go through and pull some of the slubs, which I did in this to some degree. But, um, uh, like I can see a couple of pieces, a couple of areas, like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if you can even see. This one is actually a fairly evenly woven piece of, um, linen, but there's some of them, like some of the brands you get are, aren't as good as other brands, so they'll have more slubs in them. I'm the type of person that, you know, every once in a while I'll get kind of bored stitching and I'll be looking at my fabric, oh look, there's one, and I'll go pull, you know use my needle and kind of get under it a little bit and pull it a little loose and then pull out the little furry extra slubby part. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but <laughs> I am a slub puller. I guess that's what you would call it. So, but anyway, this is Stone Hearth Hutch and this is as far as I've gotten since the last time. This is all the stitching I've gotten. Just this little bit up here. All the stitching I've gotten done since my last video. Hasn't been a lot, but like I said, I've been stupid busy with work, and that's coming to an end. And we're going to my in-laws' house this weekend, and I get to stitch. <gasps> Yay! So anyway, that's it. I think that's it for now, though. Um, I don't have a whole lot of else going on. Um, yeah, that's the one I want. Um, forgot to put that in the bag. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, not a whole lot going on. Um, well, my husband and I, um, on the 17th of February, my husband and I celebrate our 22nd wedding anniversary. Um, every year we pick between going out for sushi or going to the Melting Pod, which is a fondue restaurant. Um, We've been to sushi for the last couple of years, so we're actually going to go to the melting pot this year, which will be lots of fun. So I have to remind myself that I have to get the reservation in for that. Um, but yeah, so we're going to the melting pot for our anniversary on the 17th. Uh, we got married in 1996. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a fun ride and uh, really love him to death. Um, he does a lot for me and I just love him to death. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's something new, something good going on. Uh, so it's my 22nd wedding anniversary. It's my 20th work anniversary um, in March. It's going to be my 46th birthday. 47th. 47. Oh my God, I'm old. 47. I'm, I'm going to be 47 in March. So yeah, um, lots of lots of exciting things going on. Um, retired from roller derby, uh, work anniversary, lots of work. Yeah, wedding anniversary, um, <laughs> all kinds of things going on. So anyway, I'm gonna try and wrap this up. I'm going on 50 minutes. I'm sorry if I rambled. 
with you guys. Um, I didn't get to show you my diamond painting because um, I've also been doing that some. This is a little easier to pick out um, when I don't have very much time to stitch. This is, I don't know if you've seen diamond painting. This is kind of, kind of a little bit where I'm at. Um, sorry about the late, late jump on it. But I am working on this Kokeshi, this little Kokeshi doll right here. That's what she looks like. And you can see I've gotten quite a bit of her done. Yes, it's very shiny. Um, I'm working my way this way. Yeah. This is the bottom. So you can see I've gotten some of her head and stuff done. But yeah, she's very shiny. I can't wait to get her done. Because I have two more. I have two more to do. Um... I am only doing, unlike my cross stitch pieces, I'm only doing this one at a time. But it's getting very heavy. These drills, um, they call the little beads, little beads that you add on here, drills. I don't know why. Um, but they're resin and they're very shiny. So I've gotten a lot done. Um, this is just gold washi tape that I found to edge pieces with. So um, if you guys might be interested, I might actually do a d diamond painting video. Um, you can do YouTube, you can search YouTube for diamond painting. Um, there's a lot of diamond paint with me, diamond painting with me videos, DP, whatever. Um, some of them have called them diamond tubes, much like floss tube. But, um, so this is my first diamond painting. Um, it's going along pretty well. It actually works pretty quickly. Um, so if any of you are interested, interested, I might actually do a diamond paint with me video. Um, I'm hoping to do a stitch with me kind of video this weekend if I can get the video set up right so it would take a good video. My husband has told me that uh, if I'm really into making these videos, he's going to get me an actual um, video camera set up or like a microphone for doing these. Um, we've played around with the microphone settings, so hopefully the sound on my video is going to be better for you. Um, I'm trying a couple of different things to make the video come out louder. I've been talking a little louder, um, so hopefully that'll help with any sound issues you guys may have. Um, other than that, I'm sorry, I really don't have a whole lot, whole lot of ability to increase the microphone volume for you <coughs> with the current setup I have, but that may be changing in a couple of months if I'm still doing these videos in a couple of months. Um, but anyway, I hope you've liked what I've shared. Um, my diamond painting, my stitching, um, my videos. Shout outs to everybody that has been watching me. Um, everybody that subscribed to me. Uh, tell your friends. I'd like to get more subscribers. Um, I'm still kind of up in the air about uh, doing a video, uh, doing a giveaway. But that might be coming sometime. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm hoping to do more more stitch with me videos, a diamond painting with me video, if you want to see that. Um, and just in general, have fun, have a good old time. There's some um, stitch alongs going on that I'm participating in. One of them is the linen and threads mystery sampler stitch along. Um, I haven't gotten very far on it because of work. Um, I've been sort of following Mill Hill Monday, the Mill Hill Monday Facebook group. Um, I only really worked on a Mill Hill project on one Monday because of work. It's all work. Um, but I was working on, I got the stitching on the Barbados Santa finished, so now I'm just on the beading. Um, I'm in the process of working on the Mary Nativity piece from Mill Hill. Um, so hopefully in the next few Mondays I'll have time to work on that. Um, <clears throat> there's also an off the grid Facebook group that does kind of a stitch along sort of thing on Friday nights where you just, you know, if you're home and you can stitch, you just stitch and post pics of your progress. Um, it's kind of an off the grid, off the grid stitch along on Friday nights. Um, Maybe I'll get a chance to do that. I only found out about that this past week, and I missed it. I found out about it Friday night, about 11.45 p.m. 
So yeah, I was a little late to kind of join that, but I joined the group anyway, and hopefully I will be um, working on that some on Friday nights. Won't be able to this Friday night because we'll be driving, I'll be working, and then my husband and I have to get home, pack the car, hit the road for the two, two and a half hour trip to the in-laws in West Virginia. So um, we'll be doing that Friday night, and somewhere along the way we're going to stop and eat, so... Yeah, I'll be on the road most of Friday night, which will be all right, because once I get there, I usually wind down and either pull out a book or stitch or do something, so that'll be fun. Ah, the Olympics. The Olympics start Thursday. Yes, the opening ceremonies are on Friday, but the Olympics start Thursday. There is uh, some sort of group that has, I forget where it is but they posted about an Olympic stitch along and each day has a different theme I had the themes all written down and then I wrote over them or did something with the paper that I had them written down on so I can't tell you what the few first few days themes are um, I'm not even sure where you can find that it's probably on Facebook somewhere it might be maybe in stitch mania in the Facebook group, you may be able to do, like, Olympic stitch along or something. I don't know. But the Olympics start Thursday. The other thing that starts, it's big for me, that starts this weekend, is NCAA softball. I'm a big fan of fast-pitch softball, especially, particularly women's fast-pitch fast softball, and I really like watching NCAA softball. So you'll probably hear me post and talk about that. Um, there's a few games on ESPN this weekend that start too. So with the Olympics and with uh, NCAA softball starting up, um, I'm probably going to be reactivating my Sling TV subscription. Um, I usually have it from February or March every year to mid-June um, so I can get the Women's College World Series. That's the beginning of June. So... Anyway, I got that. Well, I'm looking at almost being an hour, you guys. Sorry I'm keeping you guys up late. It's going on almost 10 o'clock here. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> um, I don't know that I'm going to get the pictures, the roller derby pictures added. I'm not sure. Um, if I do, great. If not, I'll see if I can remember to add them to another video in the near future. So um, anyway... I hope you guys have had a great stitching week or two. Um, it's been hectic for me. Hoping finally to get a lot of stitching in this weekend at my in-laws. Hopefully y'all can do a stitch with me video or at least some videos or take some pictures of what it looks like down there. Um, our area is slated to get a winter storm kind of overnight tonight. We're expecting two to four inches with the possibility of some ice. So that'll make getting to work tomorrow a little interesting. Um, but other than that, I don't think we're expecting any more stuff. So anyway, happy stitching, stitch them all, buy them all, stash it all, get all the needle minders, <laughs> win all the Olympic medals, uh, just have fun. And you know what? Don't let anybody ever tell you you can't do something. The only way you're going to know you can't do it is if you try try that's that's all you got to do is just try um that's why i am now retired from roller derby because i gave it a try it sounded like fun you know what if it sounds like fun all you got to do is try <laughs> so be like me and just give it a try what what's it gonna hurt you're gonna learn something about yourself if if you try and that's all you can do is just give it your best shot um, you know, it's always, it's always something, there's always something out there to learn. Um, just give it a try. All right. Enough food for thought for tonight. <laughs> that was a little unexpected and I'm sorry. Um, anyway, I'm off to drink my tea and stitch. And, uh, here's to everybody out there in Floss Tube. Enjoy, enjoy the night. Happy stitching. And may you get everything done and buy everything you want and get all the needle minders you want. Just do it, do it all, have it all, enjoy it all. Take care. Bye.